Before we move on to part two of this tutorial, I want to talk about a handful of comments that were made that were really good that were about some features that could actually improve upon the workflows that I've showed. These are actually really cool, so I learned a couple of interesting things. So let's come in here and take a look at how I had handled the angled edges by putting in this Z-step thing so that we have an edge that comes in at a right angle or a 90 degree angle to the bevel itself, to the beveled edge, to prevent distortion in the bevel itself. Well, it turns out the bevel modifier can handle this. So if we come over here and we remove these, so let's just do a dissolve, you can kind of see that it does, it, it kind of introduces some distortion here in the bevel geometry. But turns out the bevel modifier can actually handle this with an option that I didn't realize that was there. So if we come over here under geometry, there's this option called loop slide. And you really wouldn't have an idea what it does until you actually turn it off and then it does this. It actually correctly handles this situation by preventing this angle from going all the way to the edge that's being beveled and it puts it at the edge of the bevel itself. It essentially slides it in. So that's a really awesome option. So thank you to the person that made the comment about that. The next comment was about a feature called limited dissolve that I did not realize was there. And I actually think this is kind of a thing with the way they've engineered this feature that makes it not very obvious. So uh, let's come back over here. Let's turn this off and go back to my original profiles. We had tessellated these Bezier curves in such a way that we could then extrude them and do modeling work with them in the polygon realm. So when we come in and look at that, we've got these Bezier curves to form this object and we need to tessellate this into a Bezier format. Okay, so we can see what the resolution is like and then we want to come over here and convert this explicitly over into polygon mesh format, but it does this thing where it leaves all of these planar vertices in there. So I had shown how we could come in and we just dissolve them using the dissolve vertices function but it turns out there's a way you can do this in one operation. So if I press the A key to select everything, if you then press X, which is normally a delete function, there's actually an option down here called limited dissolve. And it's not really obvious what this does, but if you come in, there is a max angle and you just see how it automatically removed all of those vertices. It detects the angle between the vertices, and if they are below the threshold, it just automatically removes them. Well, if we zoom in over here, it's actually removed one too many vertices here and here. So if I take this down to a value of two, it restores those, but it's removed all of those vertices along that linear path. So. Thank you to the person that let me know about this limited dissolve. Now, I wish Blender would have this as an option when we do, do dissolve vertices. It, it would make sense to me to perhaps have the, this as an option. But it's under delete, so if you press the X key, it will be there. Another comment that several people made had to deal with multiply selected objects and making a change which by default only affects the actively selected element, then you need to transfer that to the other objects. Turns out there's actually a faster way of doing it. If you hold the Alt key down when you make a change, it'll automatically apply it to all objects. But for me, that never worked. If I hold the Option Alt key down because I'm using a laptop on the Mac, the Alt key is mapped to view manipulation and panning behavior. So I went in and I examined the emulate three button mouse function and there it is. The Alt key has been reassigned to work for the simulation process. So I can switch that over to the OS key, which in the Mac case becomes the command key. But when I do that, it gives me this Alt function. So let's demonstrate this. So let's say I want to come over here and I've got two of these objects selected, these Bezier curves. This is the actively selected. So if I come over here without holding any modifier keys down and I change to 2D, 
it only affects that object and then I need to come over here and do that copy to selected. Okay, so let's undo back to this. But now if I hold that option Alt key down and then I click 2D, they both happen at the same time. And likewise, if I came down here and turned off the fill mode by holding the Alt key down, Option Alt, then that happens for both objects. So this is just something to be aware of if you're using a laptop and you have the Emulate 3 button mouse turned on and you're using the default Alt, that Alt key gets redefined. So just be aware of that. Now, one thing I've discovered is that for parameter changes that involve values, you have to make a change to the value and then hold that Option Alt key and hit Return Enter for it to transfer those parameter changes to all the objects.